Okay, so we're continuing. We have, um, I'm setting up my second keyframe based on my sketch. I'm adding components as I need to. Is it this? Yes. So my sketch shows a little bit more clouds in the sky in the second keyframe and my character moving a little bit, but not much change otherwise. So I changed the color and the amount of clouds in the background. So there we go. We went from, uh, anyway. So these two layers together make my background. And then I change the position of my character a little bit from this to this. And I've kept the shadow completely the same. But I guess to keep that moving a little bit, I'll go ahead and just move it slightly. So it feels like the lighting, since it's outside, is a little dynamic. So I just shifted it a little bit over. And because of the overlay, that affects the background. So the shadow went from this to this. Now, I, I don't want to have both shadows turned on. Otherwise, it will just get darker and darker. Okay, so that's set up. Now I have to play with my atmosphere. So I'm going to make a duplicate of the atmosphere, which because it's uh, soft-edged is going to double it up. And maybe I do want it to double up. I don't know, but I do want to change the color of it. Just subtly. I can be a little bit more wild with this. So from warm like this to cooler like that, very subtle. And then maybe I want to just move it a little with my move tool like that. Maybe the other way. Or maybe just kind of down and around. All right, so now this is my second keyframe. It's a little too subtle maybe in the background with the cloud, so I'm going to push that from 10% up to, let's do 20%, or even 25. Or is that going to be too much from that to that? Yeah. Let's go down to from 10 to 15. It's hard to judge this now. That's why we'll be running animation tests later. Okay, now this is my second keyframe. So I want to make sure I save it as a PSD, you know, update that, and then go to export as JPEG. Do all the defaults. That was my first keyframe exported. This is my second keyframe exported. So then I go to Downloads, where I find it, and I'm going to label this as number two. And now already, if I open both of these up, I can get a little peek at my animation reel. So it goes from this to this. And I can already say, okay, what did I do too much of? Did I do too Perfect. much clouds or what do you guys think? Um, I'm just thinking, um, I thought we were putting a significant bit of difference to leave space for uh, in between slides or are we, would you consider that too much of a change? I know your character won't be moving much. Yeah, it totally depends on your sketch, right? So Understood. because you've sketched it out over nine frames and your nine frames tell your essential story, that's the only amount of change I need between frame one and two. Between this frame and this frame, it looks like there's a lot more that happens, right? And so then I might decide that there needs to be four frames added in between here. But to get to my beginning to work, you know, I'm just getting a slow start. So that the the weather system and the all of that comes as a bit of a surprise, yeah. So I think that will work, but it really depends on your story. So the first goal is to actually get your keyframes done, and if there's a lot of change, if it went from this to this, then I'd have to change the creature's position a lot more. But I'm just using my sketch as a guide. 
All right, next, setting up for keyframe three. So for keyframe three, my creature's position is changed, starting to shiver, and I even want the hint of some cloud of some snow. So I'm really going to build up that weather system. So starting from the background, what I can do is duplicate the background again and change its coloring, make it a little bit cooler. Maybe I can add more blue to the midtones like I did the first time, but maybe I also want to desaturate it a little bit. And because this is done on a duplicate, I'm not harming anything. And I might even want to brighten it a little bit. And I could try playing with the overall hue and maybe dialing that down a little bit towards cyan. Yeah, it's starting to look kind of colder now, just in the coloring of the background. Right. Okay, then with the clouds, I can definitely up their opacity. Let's go to 30, but I can also add another element. So I have these kind of snow elements or things that I thought would work for snow. I think this is going to be a little too strong, but I can try it as a texture overlay. Use Control T, stretch it. These are ice crystals. And then I can try a blending mode on it. I haven't even rasterized it yet, so maybe pin light kind of works. Soft light, that works better. So just a kind of beginning of, of snow falling, right? I'm going to go ahead and rasterize it so I can delete away from it and move it around. I might erase a little. But even at 100%, that's not too strong. And because they're ice crystals, this is kind of more of an atmosphere thing. And it should start to affect my creature too. So I might take my eraser at a lower opacity. So let's just dial back the opacity on that a little bit as it builds up, but I'll add that into atmosphere. So what I've really changed is the opacity of the clouds. It's going to be different for, for each of you, what you change for each keyframe and the color of my background. And then I added kind of ice crystals into the atmosphere. Now for my creature, again, I want to make a duplicate, turn off the ones behind and go to Edit, Puppet Warp, which works well for a PNG cutout creature. Pin it at its beak and at its tail. Maybe not each toe this time. And then I want to shift the head up more. Oh, I need a little bit more than that, though. So I just did Command-Z. Because Puppet Warp's a bit of a pain, you have to plot your anchors each time. So I need something at the neck, at the tail, and for the feet. <laughs> you can add more anchors as you think you need them. But I'm just doing subtle movements, just so it looks alive. That's where the silhouette really helps. and hit return. So it goes from, come on, from this to this. Starting to get a little concerned. Its arm is moving. Eventually that arm is going to come into the body. It's going to kind of hug itself. But right now it's just kind of shivering a little. 
maybe I want to being pretty picky here, but maybe I want to bring the rib cage in a little bit because when it gets cold, we kind of shrink ourselves. Our muscles tense a little. All right. And then for the shadow, I'll just jitter the shadow a little bit. It just means move it around a tiny bit so it feels dynamic. And then for the atmosphere, I added the ice crystals, but I also want to make a duplicate. And I want to, let's see, play with the color more dramatically. I'm going to darken the atmosphere. And I'm going to saturate it a little bit more. And I'm going to shift its color to something cooler on the cooler spectrum. Yeah, so now it starts to look like conditions for snow might happen. These shapes are a little sharp, so I'm just going to use an overall filter to blur them a tiny bit. So they don't distract. So with the Gaussian blur, let's do it one more time. Yeah, I think we can get away with that. Okay, now I s export that as a JPEG. You can see that in my downloads. I label it number three. And if I want to do a quick test, I can open it up just in preview. And I have my first three frames. So the weather's changing quick. And my, my little Psyduck is getting concerned. And each little subtle thing helps, even the moving of the shadow. So everything seems pretty believable and consistent there. Good time to save it as a, you know, save my PSD. And now I'm starting, I'm going to have to composite in some more elements. Because now it's going to be hugging itself, building up some chunks of ice for keyframe four in my sketch. It's all based on your sketch. So for my background, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the background. And I'm going to shift its colors. I'm going to shift its levels, make it a little bit darker, a little bit more desolate. But its highlights brighter because those frozen wastelands are a little bit more contrasted. Then I'm going to shift its colors to being less saturated. Hmm. I don't like all those magentas though. Let's see. Yeah, maybe like that. Just just a little less saturated. And a little darker. Okay. And then the clouds, I'm gonna shift that up to about 50%. I think that will work. Now for the character and the shadow, duplicate both of those. Turn off the ones underneath. And I'm going to do a puppet warp, but maybe even a coloring change too on the creature. I want his bill to keep going up. His feet to keep kind of wandering in a little bit. We start making himself kind of smaller. 